Beautiful. Thank you, Lisa. Okay. Hi, everybody. Thank you so much for joining me today. Um, so as Lisa mentioned, my name is Tessa. I am the program manager for NACO and my role is to really assist any user, um, teacher, parent, organization in utilizing our program Journey 2050 that was developed um, with the help of Nutrien and partners from around the globe. So uh, my email, if you ever need to get in touch, is right here. It's programs at naco.org. Um, I'm happy to answer any questions uh, later at the end of this, during this, or via email. Please don't hesitate to reach out. So today I'm going to go over the basics of Journey 2050, what it looks like, how we can use it in the classroom, um, and some exciting updates that have happened in the last year that have made it even more relevant to what's happening in the world and um, more applicable to the situation that we're learning from home. Um, so let's get started. So Journey 2050, uh, this program provides youth with a unique opportunity to explore global food security and sustainability. Um, we are looking at how to answer this very profound question of how do we sustainably feed the world by the year 2050. Um, and this program is a free program. Um, it is designed with the help of teachers and industry experts. And you by no means have to have a background in agriculture to understand um, this curriculum or use it. It's made to make everyone feel comfortable that they can execute it um, with ease. It is geared towards grades seven through 12. There are some educators that use it in lower grades and higher and pick some pieces. Um, but it's really, it's a great curriculum that will touch in a classroom that's in agriculture, class, uh, history, geography, social studies, science, STEM focus. Um, it really can cater to all of those. So it's um, well utilized in a variety of different ways. And we hope that it fits into your program wherever you are and what that looks like. So students are going to get to explore how we feed the world sustainably um, with a really fun component that's a virtual stimulation. And in this virtual stimulation, students get to experience the lives of farm families from around the world in three different countries. Uh, students get to play these uh, game levels in Journey 2050 and explore how their decisions have an impact and how it affects what we call the three main factors of sustainability in the game, which are society, environment, and economic, um, and how those ripple effects come from their decisions and if there's positive and negative implications of those. Um, so again, the goal is to really help our students understand what the world is going to look like in a few years and how are we going to effectively make choices that are going to make a positive impact in the future and help that uh, issue of what we see as world food, uh, excuse me, <laughs> enough food to feed the world. So the year 2050 is going to bring some challenges, and we expect. Um, our population is currently over 7 billion people, and by the year 2050, it's estimated to be nearly 10. So that means our food production is going to have to nearly double, um, if not more, and we're going to have to utilize the same amount of resources and land that we have, or possibly even less. So that's going to put um, some pressure on those that are involved in the agriculture industry. Um, our farmers are going to have to make more food. Our yields are going to have to be greater. Um, but there's also things that we can't control when we look to the future or even plan for. So we have to figure out how to be most efficient um, yet sustainable on meeting the demands of the world. So throughout this game and through these lessons, we get to explore pieces of that and what it can look like. So Journey 2050 is now seven um, levels, seven lessons, we call them. Um, previously, in the last, or the year prior, we had six. So uh, we cover a variety of different topics that really talk about what it means to be sustainable, how do we accomplish this, what does it look like, how does our past put us in this position, how will our future put us in a position of sustainability. So level one, um, lesson one, is all about um, what is sustainability, defining it with our students, looking at the issue of food waste, um, which is a critical piece to being sustainable um, as a world. Level two is going to be all about plant health, soil health, um, nutrients. Level three is all about water, water conservation. Level four is all about the economy, trade. Um, level five is going to bring us to land use um, and our resources. 
and the world and how our culture impacts us and our choices and what we grow and where we grow things. Level six is all about careers and talks about how agriculture, as we all know, touches all of us in different ways. But if we're eating, wearing clothes and living in a house, um, you know, ag, ag is a part of our lives every day. Um, and those careers that maybe we think of right away, like a farmer, are vital and important. But there's also those things that maybe students don't realize right away that you can have a career in marketing and still be involved in the agriculture industry. So that's actually a fun career avatar that the students get to create of themselves while playing. Um, and we'll look at that uh, in a little bit when we get to play later on. Level seven is our newest lesson, and this is all about the new technology and innovations that are happening um, and even are being dreamt of for futuristic opportunities on how we can better utilize the land we have, the resources we have, um, and what cool new technology is available to just be the most sustainable and efficient possible. And then we did some revising on what was our summary previously, which is now um, our program summary is an action piece, if you will. So it is all about um, creating a project through project based learning focus um, and how we can help solve that problem of sustainably feeding the world. So the virtual simulation game that I mentioned is currently only available for our first six levels. Um, we hope to add in another level to um, have it align with our lesson plan for level seven. Um, and there's actually kind of three games within the virtual simulation. And a, a easy way to kind of remember that is the color coding. So all of the blue, the first four levels is all about farming. Those are farming games. Level five is its own game that talks about history and geography and um, land use. Level six, again, is that career avatar. So all of these game pieces and levels can be accessed um, through an app. So the App Store, Windows Store, Google Play, I'll house them, and journey2050.com. And I'll walk you through the website a little bit and how to access everything and get started right away. Um, but so they are available to play. Um, through an app or the browser, um, and we can even download it directly onto devices. So this carrot here on the bottom of the screen is just a quick image that's pulled from a slide that's in level one that talks about um, food waste and food security. So this is an ugly carrot we would think if we saw it in the grocery store probably. But the reality is, is nothing's wrong with this carrot as we know. This nutritional value is still the same. Um, it's still going to taste great. It just looks different than probably what we see for consumer preference in the grocery store. Um, but this is a the reality to talk about with your students that hunger is often caused by food waste um, and inequality of distribution and not scarcity. So it's not necessarily that we're looking at not a lot of, there won't be enough food necessarily in the future by the year 2050, but that we have some issues on how we utilize what we have now. And of all the food produced on our planet, Unfortunately, one third of our total food supply is wasted. So there's a lot of work that can be done to really helping lessen that percentage um, and taking our resources and our food that's produced and better utilizing it, becoming more sustainable and efficiently feeding the world. And it's not just a problem in uh, developing countries, it's developed countries as well, where we see food is um, thrown out and overconsumed. Whereas in developing countries, we often see that food is lost due to unreliable storage and transportation. So in order to achieve being sustainable, um, it's critical that we understand how to eradicate hunger and poverty comes to an end. And part of that um, is a discussion around uh, food waste. So next I'm gonna move into talking about how sustainability again is talked in Journey 2050. Those three factors I mentioned earlier, we put those into a really neat image called the sustainability barrel. So um, keep your eyes out for that when I show this quick preview. We're gonna talk about it a little bit more in a minute. Um, but to feed the world, uh, we need to do so in a way that's profitable, supports um, a healthy quality of life and protects our land and our water and our resources. So here is a quick little intro to what our video in level one looks like to give you an idea of Journey 2050.
What will our world be like in the year 2050? Oops, so sorry about that. By 2050, the Earth will be crowded by 2 billion more people. They're all going to need water, homes, jobs, and medicines. But most importantly, how are they all going to be fed? Huh. This growing population will eat the equivalent to all of the food grown in the last 500 years put together. That's over 60% more than we grow today. 1 billion tons more cereal and 50% more fresh water every year. This extra food has to be grown on less land in a way that protects the environment and animals while making sure there's enough food for generations to come. This is called sustainability and it can only be achieved by improving its three interconnected elements, economy, society, and environment. Let me show you what we mean. Imagine a barrel with parts made equally from these three elements. Well, you can only fill this barrel until its lowest piece. So if the environment is the lowest piece of the barrel, it limits the sustainability. This piece must be improved to make the world's sustainability better. What does economic mean here? It's about earning money, creating jobs and incomes to support the national and local community. Then there are the social needs. People need things like food, education, and medical care to stay healthy. We also need infrastructure like roads to get the food from the farm to your plate. And finally, there are environmental needs. Soil quality needs to be maintained. Habitats need protection. Water must be conserved. And we need to protect our atmosphere by keeping our greenhouse gases to a minimum. Our world leaders committed to 17 global goals in the United Nations. Okay, so that sustainable was part of agriculture our is to create video. Let's keep it there. We go uh, for level one. So again, sustainability barrel um, is kind of our image and our way to convey what we're trying to focus on. Um, what is the importance? Uh, the important factors that we look at. What sustainability can be defined as. So economic, social, and environmental factors, um, and these three things kind of navigate us through our journey to the year 2050 in our game. Um, and this is also actually how the score is calculated in the virtual simulation while the kids are farming um, in their game. So it plays a role throughout. Um, and we, uh, we realize that we are only as um, successful as a community as our lowest limiting factor. So we're continually trying to raise our lowest factor um, and level out as efficiently as possible. So we are gonna hop over to lesson two. I just wanna touch base on what this looks like. Um, so level one was kind of an introduction about sustainability, um, food security, and then we roll into level two, which is all about plant health. Um, and we're gonna get to play level one and level two, hopefully level six at the end. I'm gonna wait till the end so we can um, kind of just keep rolling through rather than bouncing back and forth. If we were all together live, I'd have us pause and open our um, devices and play. Um, um, but so we'll just wait till the end. So level two, we're talking about plant health, soil health, um, what it means to have nutrients in our soil. Um, and in each level, each lesson plan, we have a fun and interactive interest approach activity um, provided for you. So that way you can dive into something interactive with the kids, make sure that they have an interest um, and are engaged in a little bit. So. This is an example of an option for level two. Um, and it is talking about how we see the depletion of nutrients from our soil when we're farming. Um, so what happens essentially in this activity is you take a see-through cup, mark it out with eight lines, um, get yourself a straw and some water and a volunteer. And what we're gonna do is have um, this cup be filled up with water. Um, I brought a little example over here to kind of show some rubber bands in case you <laughs> don't wanna mark up a cup um, and a straw. And you're gonna go through with the students what it is to have um, basically healthy soil. So if our cup is full of water, 
Um, we are going to essentially think of this as healthy soil that is full of nutrients. And then we plant a seed. Seed goes into our soil and starts to germinate. So as that seed starts to germinate, we're going to have our volunteer student um, suck down some water to the level three mark. Uh, so that's going to represent that the seed is germinating, growing, um, taking that water, it's using its stored energy, taking those nutrients from the soil. So there's going to be less there than we originally started with at the full mark. And then we have um, harvest occur and harvest is going to bring us down to the level one mark because it took some more energy out of our soil um, and we have the student drink water down to the level one mark. Then we have our field rest for a year. So we're still staying at that level one. Um, talk about what that means, what that looks like. There's graphics in the PowerPoint provided to help you convey this message. And then it's time to have um, a planting again. So we plant another seed and then we go ahead and have that seed begin to germinate. And so your student is going to then suck all of the water remaining out of the cup and make that um, kind of obnoxious sucking noise when air <laughs> hits through your straw to represent that your soil has been depleted, that our nutrients are no longer sufficient for what's growing um, and that we need to look at how to fix that because if we don't, we're gonna probably run into some issues. So that can lead into a discussion about what happens during um, growth to a plant with depleted nutrients or not enough water. Um, there's a discussion then that can lead into how do we apply nutrients? Can we apply nutrients? What are our options? Um, is there a cost that's good or bad? Is there environmental factors that are good or bad? Um, and then we can lead into pouring more water into our cup because yes, we can apply nutrients. Um, nutrients are necessary for growth, um, but there are ways to do it efficiently, sustainably. And so that is kind of what our level two is all about. And we'll see when we play the game, um, even more so what that means. Um, part of this level also talks about our three main nutrients that are used in plant growth. So nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium. And then in our game level, the students get to earn kind of um, a 4R badge, which is all about the right source, the right time, the right place, and the right rate. And that discussion of um, being sustainable in that capacity, making sure that we're not overusing, putting things in the wrong place, um, that we're not applying at the wrong time, which would not be well utilized then by our plant that's growing. Um, so great discussion on how things grow. This is just a quick visual that's pulled from the PowerPoint that's um, provided for level two um, to let the students see a visual of what would happen um, applying fertilizer or not. Um, it's also a great experiment to do in the classroom. Um, you know, what happens if you apply or don't apply some nutrients to soil. Uh, so great discussion here about our soil and what it means to us and how essential it is. And uh, as I mentioned, we're going to earn a badge in level two. So students will have an option once they understand um, those four R's in the beginning of level two to utilize that or not um, to apply nutrients to uh, bring our soil back to hopefully the best health possible. Um, and obviously, we'll see that there is a cost there to do that. But with that, we also see there's crop yield and soil health is positive. Whereas if you didn't apply something to the soil, um, it might save you some money, you think up front, but if you don't have a good yield and your soil health is really poor, um, it's not really going to give you a good profit man because you'll have nothing to sell. So again, as students walk through these levels, um, they're really going to get to make these choices themselves that have a ripple effect um, that will be probably with a positive or negative consequence. Um, Opportunities pop up during the game for investments, um, challenges come along the way. Um, so it's a really fun, realistic game and I can't wait to play with you all in a little bit. This is just an image of what it looks like to apply nutrients to our plots in the game. It is this really neat, fun tie-dye um, kind of watering can. Uh, so we'll be able to see that when we get to level two. So level six in our game is all about careers. Um, and again, we are all affiliated with agriculture, all play a role. We're all eating and wearing clothes. Um, so 
this is a great opportunity to really let students see how broad the horizon is and um, how much their passions and interests and what they want to do for a living can still help um, make a positive difference by the year 2050 and having a role with agriculture. Um, so the interest approach activity here for this lesson is to create a food web um, or do some team competitions uh, to see how many jobs it takes to make a commodity. Uh, so this is an example of cheese. And uh, for this lesson, we're gonna see that you can create a plethora of jobs all around cheese. Cheese is produced from milk. Um, so you'll lead into that discussion with students to really let them explore what it takes, how it came to be, um, the steps from farm to table, uh, why we utilize all these different people in this role to create a commodity, how much it really does impact um, our society just to make something, right? All these people are employed in such different capacities just to make cheese, something that probably all of us eat and enjoy every day. Another option to kind of make this one harder is you can turn it into categories. Um, I love to do this one in the room with teachers when I'm presenting because I think it's a little more challenging. So this is an example I did this last year. So strawberry ice cream is your commodity you're given and you are having to come up with all the jobs that are related to making that um, that start with the letter F. So I took some time and created a list and I came up with 21 examples um, that are careers tied to strawberry ice cream starting with the letter F. So it's just the possibilities are endless and I think it's great to you know show students this too and let their mind um, be open to wow you know I can still play a positive role and maybe really still do my graphic design. So um, just a fun way to really engage students and help them um, determine where their interests are and how they can have a positive impact. So I wanted to go over this exciting new level seven lesson that is now incorporated into Journey 2050. Um, this is all about technology and innovation. So we really took some time to look at what new ag tech is happening currently and what's being considered as possibilities for the future. Uh, the, object the objective of this lesson um, is really to see what the impact of farming or the impact farming is gonna, the impact that technology will have on farming for the future. Um, we're seeing so many companies um, investing in uh, IT management and software that are normally, you know, just a tractor company or a feed company because there's the realization that we can do so much more efficiently and sustainably um, and with greater yields and more success with the use of technology that's continually changing. I mean, our cell phones are updating every second, I feel like. so. There's endless possibilities really of what it could look like in the future. Um, and this lesson discusses a few fun things like autonomous robots, drones, um, aerial crop imaging, livestock health monitors, you know, comparable to a Fitbit that we wear, um, cultured meat, so things grown in a lab, um, new seed varieties. So it does touch on GMOs and what that means and what that looks like. Um, and the goal in this lesson is that the students um, will really take on um, one of these new technologies or innovations, do some research, determine its benefits. Um, I always say I have a raised hand. Sorry, I will. Uh... Actually, Tessa, there's not this many people participating. We're not able to okay. answer, answer questions through the raised hand. Just to direct your question, type it in the Q&A if you would. Uh, that's the best way to get an answer. I'm answering questions as we go. So and the ones I can't, we'll ask Tessa in a few minutes. So thank okay. you. Thank you, Lisa. Thank you, everybody. Yes, please throw your questions in there and we'll go over them. Um, and so, uh, yeah, so that research project is going to let them kind of discover what's out there or dream up something new um, and explore that, you know, not one size fits all is going to kind of make solutions for the future that we have to realize where countries are and how it's working, um, but really fun stuff. So I'm just going to show you a quick preview on what that video looks like so you can see kind of what our vision is. Life on the farm 100 years ago looked vastly different compared to today, and it will continue to change to meet the needs of the world. 
cutting edge innovations in agriculture are being developed with a purpose to overcome the challenges we face in providing food, fuel, and fiber for a growing population. Some technologies are emerging, while others have been adopted globally. Here are a few examples. Have you seen any of these innovations in action? Autonomous robots. Agriculture requires a significant amount of manual labor. What do you think a robot could do? Autonomous pickers identify and pick ripe fruits and vegetables. Other specialized robots could also find and eliminate weeds and pests that damage crops. Agriculture sensors. When it comes to nutrient management, watering, pest management, and harvest, too early or too late doesn't cut it. When it's time to take action, high-tech sensors located in fields send alerts to farmers through an app on their phone. Aerial crop it. Okay, so lots of great stuff in there. So I wish I had more time to show you the whole thing, but I'll leave that for you to go discover. Uh, so this is just a quick preview of um, an optional enriching activity um, and level seven in all our lessons we have um, a bunch of additional resources and enriching activity activities provided that are just optional to let you enhance um, or further the discussion of that level's focus. So this is kind of a fun um, bingo, um, if you will, of getting to know your classmates and um, while students are doing so, they're realizing how much technology they're utilizing um, all the time in their day-to-day -day lives and how much of it um, is probably related back to ag tech happening. So a really fun one, and that's just there again for you to choose to use if you so please. So these are a couple other updates um, or further information on the updates that happened. Um, we have um, now uh, action happening in a couple different ways. So that action plan we talked about is the program summary, but also we have service learning lesson plans that are now a part of our program. Um, and we have those for each level, so one through seven. And I will talk about these a little bit more. So our program summary, um, the objective here is to really focus on that profound question again, um, using projects using the project-based learning approach. Um, how are we gonna sustainably feed the world by the year 2050? And students are gonna dig into that, um, utilizing the 17 uh, UN Sustainable Development Goals that were created to help kind of guide the world to how we achieve sustainability. And because it is a project-based learning um, focused uh, lesson, um, you know, it's really encouraged that it's the student's choice and interest and personal, um, you know, their meaningful um, reasoning to why they feel their solution would be the best, but to create a, a, a solution that can go into action and really positively impact their local community or beyond. And those service learning lesson plans um, came about, uh, Nutrien has a partnership with WE, um, the WE organization, and together they developed WE Schools, um, Grow Together Resources. So these resources are free, they're optional, um, they're part of each lesson for you, and um, it's a new service learning activity that was designed to really allow and empower, excuse me, not allow, to empower youth um, to explore food insecurity and make a positive impact again um, locally or beyond. So great resources, they're there for you to use or not. Um, and again, everything's free. Um, and we'll get to how you get there in just a minute. Um, so the website, journey2050.com, is where you are gonna head first to access everything. Um, the entire program is available there. The first step is to register um, and registering is free. You just need to create a teacher account. Um, so uh, that way we have um, the ability to know that you are in the system and make sure that you have access to everything and connect you to a state or province um, organizational um, contact. Um, someone will hopefully reach out to you and engage to make sure that you're um, aware of how Journey 2050 works and how to best utilize it in your school or organization. So starting on journey2050.com, you created your teacher account, you logged in, um, and you're gonna land on a home screen that has this orange bar and these three main tabs. So the begin program is where you will find um, everything you need to start. Uh, downloading the game is the first um, a page you'll hit. Um, you can download the game directly again through an app or play through the web browser or there is a zip file where you can download 
the game directly onto your computer. Um, but the step-by-step -step guide is really where you will live and spend most of your time. That's where all the curriculum is. So we have all the lessons broken out um, piece by piece. So each lesson um, has a lesson plan, a PowerPoint, and a video, um, enriching activities, and a service learning plan. Again, the game only right now is for level one through six. Um, and there's a direct link to everything right there. Or right in that first getting started box at the top, at the very bottom, it says to download all these files for this program at once, click here or click download. So that is a zip folder that contains everything for you. So you can just grab it all and go. So again, everything is ready for you. You don't need to make a PowerPoint. Um, you don't need to create additional um, lesson plans. Um, and I just want to touch base quickly on this here. There's also an opportunity to use uh, what we have are called teacher reports in the system. Um, and they are created um, due to your teacher code. So when you register, you are going to be provided with a teacher code that goes into the beginning of the game for each student. And it will pop out a report um, at the end of them playing. There's a couple tips and tricks to how those reports work. And I often get a lot of questions. And I don't know if I have time to really go over that um, in detail. So on journey2050.com, we added a new web page due to COVID and our distance learning becoming um, necessary. And there you will find a tips and tricks sheet um, on how to use it at home and what the reports look like and how to utilize those reports. So please, if you have any questions trying to get started, visit this page. Um, hopefully it has everything helpful there for you to get started. We also have now linked um, with some wonderful resources that were designed by our partnership, um, National Agriculture in the Classroom works with the National Center for Ag Literacy and their team created what is basically um, the teacher presenting these lessons so that our um, users have an uh, uh, easy way to access the material and hear it if you as the educator are not able to present it. Um, so that's linked up right on our um, homepage and ready to be utilized. So um, we really feel like this is a complete package to be ready to go for everybody during this distance learning time and hopefully um, it fits right in your um, class. Journey 2050 has that fun virtual game that I've been talking about um, and was loved so much by the students that we also have Nutrien has created a um, free farming game that's realistic called Farmers 2050 that you can play and is often taken home as a homework assignment previously um, by teachers. And it's students again understanding um, what world food sustainability looks like, the farm to plate process, um, still having to take into consideration those environmental, social, and economic factors and getting to engage um, with farmers and community members from around the world. I'm gonna skip this quick preview. Um, there's a fun thing called global events that occur in the game and they are often realistic, um, but also fictional. And they are tied to the sustainable development goals that the UN created. Um, so it's a great way if you want to do team challenges in the classroom for homework or just have the students um, engaging in a different way. Uh, keep your eyes out for those. Once you hit level five in the game, you can join a starter team. So you could start teams within your classes. Um, just a fun, great way. We're trying to reach a million downloads to add more levels. There's currently only 40 levels and we have a lot of users that would like many more. So we're about halfway there on downloads. So please download today um, through the App Store, Google Play. It's free, no in-app purchases or fees. Um, and it's just really fun. Okay, so we are gonna get started. Um, we're gonna play the game a little bit so you all can see what it looks like. And I just wanna thank all these partners that were a part of this to make Journey 2050 possible. So we're gonna go ahead and open Journey 2050. Level one is our demo level. And we are in Kenya and the game progresses um, throughout 2020 all the way to 2050. And we get to travel to Kenya, India, and Canada and meet real farm families that work with Nutrien. Um, so these are real people. They're their farms depicted in this virtual reality. Um, the things they're growing, what 
the costs are, all of it is real. Um, so it's a great way to really show students what it looks like around the world of farm. So we are on a timer in this game, so we have to move a little quick. Um, but this is Shaney. He's an agronomist with Nutrien and he lives in Kenya. This is his family. So we're gonna learn about farming in Kenya. And we're gonna start with letting him help us in this level. He gives us tips kind of and guides us on what to do so we just understand how the game works. Um, so my beans are growing. Um, I'm gonna need to water soon. So we just click and move around. Very simple. Um, ideally, each student needs to have their own device to play um, and stay logged in because the reports, again, another hint to those is you have to have consecutively played level one through four to have a report to kick out after that. So um, with everyone learning at home right now, probably will be pretty easy. We get investments and opportunities to do things for our community. Um, we'll always know the positives and negatives that our investment has, so we can make a choice after we assess that. Jamie wants me to plant some maize. I'm gonna go ahead and plant some beans now. And he does not guide us this extensively in the next few levels. Um, it's just so that we kind of understand in that first piece. Um, you can overwater, you can underwater. So students will see what happens if you um, add too much water like this, like I'm gonna go over. Um, they will have the opportunity again in level two to apply nutrients or not. My poor maize is not doing so hot. Um, we see my sustainability score down here on the left. Um, so my environmental barrel piece is very high. So I wanna make sure I try to raise my economic and my social at some point, because again, I'm limited by my lowest factor. So beans are growing, maize is growing. Okay, my time is up. So we'll see my score. We see the score at the end of every level. So I made it to 90. My food production <laughs> is a little low. So my social piece is lowest. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit continue. So then I get to see the ripple effects of my choices. So I made that investment. Um, so my positives. Now I have an option to do some habitat uh, restoration, which I can do or not do. Uh, obviously my habitat, my environmental factor is high already. So I might not do that, but sure, we'll go ahead and do that today because I have the funds and I wanna contribute. So then we're gonna move and I apologize, uh, that hops out. So if you don't put a teacher code in the beginning of the game, a video from that lesson is automatically gonna pop up. If you do put your teacher code in, the students then have assumingly already watched the video from you and during the class and won't need to see it. And again, um, that lesson plan first and that video, that's all, um, it, it's optional before playing the game, but essentially it was designed that the lesson plan occurs, the video is watched, um, and then we pop into the game to kind of utilize that knowledge gained. So we're gonna to continue to farm. Now we have our 4R badge. So we are gonna learn about what that means and how it functions. Um, and we are gonna make some options here. So I'm gonna go ahead and do the hopefully right thing and get my badge so I can apply nutrients. So my nitrogen, my phosphorus, we need the right amounts. Okay, right rate. So this little guy needs some boost. So we are just right, not too little, not too much. That is what makes our plant grow. Right time. Right timing in the season to apply. Oops. Okay. And we're gonna to wanna to make it go away from our water, right? So we don't have some runoff. Okay, so I got my badge. And I have this fun tie-dye application happening. So I'm applying this so that hopefully my crop and my soil will be the most well utilized um, and my sustainability will increase. Definitely wanna water because we know that helps our plants grow. Hop over here and plant something. Okay, I don't have enough money for maize, so I'm going with beans. I'm gonna go ahead and not apply nutrients this time and see what happens. So students, um, you know, these are all their own choices. It's really neat to see 
the outcomes and the competition that happens and uh, students want to know why someone's score was higher when maybe they um, didn't apply nutrients the whole time, right? So they saved all that money, the student who was not applying thought. But if your yields aren't high and you're not taking care of your environment, that's not going to help your score. So it's all about balance um, and just educating students how, um, again, these factors all roll into something being sustainable with a combination of factors, not just one thing. I have some investments as an opportunity. I'm going to say no right now. Oh, well, let's say yes. <laughs> And plant. We're going to go ahead and plant some maize. We'll go ahead and do a standard practice. Okay, so that's kind of in the middle. Middle on spending money, middle on what I'm adding. My poor soil. Look, I had to spend that money anyway because I did not take care of it. So, you know, that student that maybe wanted to try to save that money, it might have come back and not been so great in the end. Tessa, Tessa, we've been asked, someone asked if you could maximize the screen. Oh, um, I'm not sure. I can't on this because it's the downloaded version. I cannot. I apologize. Sorry, uh, that's okay. Yeah, I didn't want to see it. I did not want to play through the web browser. Oh, shoot. Um, because it will slow things down. So everybody, I, I apologize. I'm not in person, but um, I encourage you to download and play and explore this game and you can do so quickly right through the browser if you don't want to open an app on your device right now um, but it's accessible through the web browser um, and you can go ahead and get started just by going to journey2050.com creating your teacher account and going to that step-by-step -step guide it will guide you right to where everything is um, i know we're getting close on time lisa are there questions i should try to answer while we're on for another yeah, that's a good idea. We have about um, 20, we have about what, a little over 10 minutes um, right now. So yeah, let's, um, let's go ahead and take some questions. Okay. Um, so and there were some that I couldn't answer. I've been trying to keep up here. How many days for the program to run? I, I suspect they're referring to how long it takes to play the game as a class. Great, great question. Sorry, I didn't cover that. So seven hours, essentially, we say a day a lesson, um, but you can speed it up or you can slow it down. Um, so there's options definitely to extend out things beyond that. But um, if you were just looking to do a level a day, seven um, days, um, the, the time of the lesson itself and the game fluctuates a little bit, um, and that's all laid out in the lesson plan for you to tell you how long everything takes. Um, just thought of something else I was gonna say. Oh, the program summary is optional. So the project-based learning piece is, you know, an optional piece. The service learning lesson plans are optional. So those don't necessarily have to happen. Um, okay. It's totally up to you. And then if uh, students use the teacher code to access a journey, can they each play individually? And that yes. So it is one teacher code provided to you as the registered teacher and the students will each put in that same teacher code um, and there is an option for a first name and a last name. Um, so you'll see a report that just has their names that gets plugged in because they put in that teacher code for you. And are they able to save their work if not finished with a level? So no, progress will be lost until the level is completed. So if I were to exit out right now, my level two would be lost. Um, so they need to get to the end of that game and they only are a few minutes. Um, this level two it's goes to Canada to next. Yeah, I'm sorry, I interrupted you. No, no, you're okay. Go ahead, Lisa. I just wanna reiterate that they have to play level one through four, that's one game, right? Yes. So, and that's laid out in that tip sheet, everybody, on journey2050.com of how the reports work again. Um, but essentially, if the students stay logged in on their device and just close out the app, their progress will save. So it, um, you can come back four days consecutively, hopefully. Um, if they exit out and unlog completely, then their progress will not show up in a teacher report unless they completed one through four right away. So some teachers have everybody sit down, play one level at a time, take note on their sustainability score because that's essentially what that first report is. Um, it's just an added accumulation. 
Um, or they'll have them sit down and play level one through four all at the same time so that they know a teacher report will kick out. Um, we are looking to redesign that when we do some updates in the fall so that there's just a report each level to make it easier for everybody. Okay, and one teacher said she has 40 minute periods. So would they be able to finish all four levels in 40 minutes? Probably not, don't you think? If it was just playing the game, sure, sure. So um, I encourage you to take a look at the lesson plan. It lays out the time frame on each piece. Um, it, and again, there's some extra activities in there. So if you were to, you know, run through the four lesson plans for four days and then come back and play the game um, and then just do some maybe enriching activities that same day. That could be a great way to um, kind of piece it all together efficiently. And someone else asked, have a lot of teachers had problems with schools blocking this? Do students have to download the game? They did have problems? Is... No, or... she's asking. You know, oh, you know, she's been? asking. Uh, they had problems with schools blocking, I guess, internet access and have students okay. had to download Great. the game rather than play them, rather than stream them. Yeah, so that's why on the right away when you log in to journey2050.com and options to play to download, there's a zip file that your IT um, person at the school can just download the game directly onto devices. So you don't need an app um, or you don't need the web browser. So that way you shouldn't have any um, blocks because yes, some schools do block it. And then there are, if someone asked what, you know, if there's a list about what countries are included in the game. It's three countries. It's, they start in Africa, go to India, and then wind up in Canada. And yes. They're, they're working on an American farm too, but they haven't finished that yet, right? Yes. Yes. We hope the year, we hope 2020 is our year. Maybe that will be our positive. <laughs> How many? We'll get some U.S. And then um, another question about 4-H volunteers. Are they able to set up an account? They can set up an account as a teacher, can't they? Yes, they can. 4-H um, uh, Canada and USA is a partner of this program. So you have access. Well, anyone has access as long as they create a free teacher account. But um, please reach out to me, too, because you are able to collaborate and do trainings um, as a 4-H uh, staff person. Um, so 4-H most definitely can utilize this. We'd like to see it increase in the U.S. and are trying to figure out the best way to do that. So open to suggestions <laughs> and ideas. And then parents, of course, can register as a teacher yes. as well. Yes. So essentially it was created as a teacher account, but um, we've seen the program obviously be utilized now by parents, um, by organizations out there, Farm Bureau, 4-H, FFA, um, uh, and you may have a surrounding organization near you too, besides Ag in the Classroom that utilizes it. So if you have a Nutrients for Life um, office near you, um, some Nutrient and Nutrient Ag Solution offices uh, may be able to guide you a little more in ways to get involved in additional programming. Um, uh, that's one thing I wanted to mention. The uh, a fun piece of Journey 2050 is what we have called the guest speaker experience, where um, we have a, somebody from an organization such as National Eye in the Classroom or the state organization come in to the classroom and basically um, present level one, two, and six in the classroom for you and walk you through how the program works. Due to COVID, that's kind of all been put on hold, um, but essentially it can still happen virtually. So when you log in, to journey2050.com, you'll see that it's an option to book a guest speaker. Again, that's been put on hold, but we hope to kind of reinstate that virtually. And that's just to have someone that we consider kind of a professional in this program to help guide you. I um, mean, if you're in Canada, uh, there's actually a Journey 2050, there's a classroom and Journey 2050 Center at Calgary Stampede Grounds. Um, so we have um, until COVID occurred, um, pretty much every day of the year, there's field trips that occur to Calgary to utilize this program and learn about sustainability on site. So it's constantly being um, tested and feedback's being given up there near headquarters. So um, a lot of fun ways to get engaged. So you can use it yourself in your classroom, reach out to um, someone local. Um, and if you're in Canada, try to do a field trip. I know they're planning to open it in the fall if possible. Another question about with the new level seven, are there plans for additional levels in the future, lessons in the future? 
Yeah, so always. So um, we want this to stay relevant and current um, and be a value in the classroom and uh, to students. So yes, we are always looking to expand, take some time. Um, right now, the goal is to do some updates in the fall and hopefully get a U.S. family added to the Journey 2050 game. And if we get enough downloads, expand out Farmers 2050. Right, and something Denise Stewartson's on the chat and she raises a good point that um, we have trained a number of our state uh, representatives like Denise in Utah on Journey 2050. And so please reach out to your state contact with your Ag in the Classroom program at the state level or just contact me uh, at info at naco.org. I'll be glad to put you in touch with the person in your state or near your state who's um, been trained and can help uh, with presentations in your classroom or whatever you may need. So we're, we're a resource, myself and Tessa, but also your state agriculture in the classroom person is too. Yes, definitely. And if you have, yeah, any questions, and I'm happy to um, connect with you via Zoom, do a presentation, help you understand how the program works. Um, I'm just excited. We had a good question. Let's remind them, um, this came up earlier. What's the difference between Journey 2050 and Farmers 2050? Sure, so Journey 2050 has previously just been what we call the, the school program. Um, it is all online, so it's accessible from anywhere, but it was designed to be in the classroom. Um, there's timers on this game because they're designed to be on a, a schedule in the school. Um, and it is, it's set up to be taught in the classroom. Farmers 2050 is an extension of basically just a virtual farming game. Um, we wanted an option for students to continue to learn. Um, the little slogan is to feed the world from the palm of your hand. So students continue to implement those um, conscious decisions based around their economic, social, and environmental um, factors in their score in the game. Um, and again, some teachers take it home as homework and just let students compete to see who gets the highest score or team up and do competitions. There's always a weekly competition happening in the game um, for those global events. So it's just kind of a fun optional extension. Yeah, good job. Um, also another good tip from Denise, just you need to just dive in and play the game to get used to the timer and, and the gameplay. It does make sense after you've played it a few times. So. Um, and it's a lot of fun and, and farmers is too. So, so with that, I think we have reached the end of our presentation. Is there a last minute question? Let me check and see. Great, so I think we've answered all the questions. Like I said, Journey is the education game in the classroom game, Farmers is the at home game. So thanks everybody for joining us uh, for this session. Hope you enjoyed it and we'll take it back into your classrooms and to your groups and, and play this game with your, with your students. You'll have a lot of fun. So with that, thank you, Tessa. You did a fabulous yeah. job. And uh, thank you everybody else for joining us. Our next session starts at 3 p.m. Eastern time in a half hour. So we will see many of you there then. Thanks again, Tessa. Thank everyone, you, everyone. Have a great day, and we'll see many of you soon. Take care. Bye. Thanks.